Okay, welcome. Uh, this is Dan Smola again from the Henry S. Olcott Memorial Library. And uh, we have started also another new program based out of the library called How I Became a Theosophist. Um, our first uh, inaugural guest ever is um, <laughs> Juliana Sassano. Welcome, Juli. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for doing this. So uh, we'll just dive right in. So um, where are you from? <laughs> I have a generic set of uh, questions here, so okay. I'm going to adjust them to you. Where are you from, Juliana, and how long have you been a member of the TS? Okay. I'm originally from Argentina, and I joined the Theosophical Society when I was, oh, I don't know, uh, I think it was 1996. Yeah, so I don't know how old I was. Okay. <laughs> the year is, is, is enough, right? Yo, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll check it later. With but I was, I, I was um, still sympathizer. I was attending the TS. Even meetings. though you were per persecuting the society secretly. Right. <laughs> um, before that, that's what I was saying. Before that, okay. Right. And, and how did you first learn about theosophy or come in contact with this society? Well, it's interesting because uh, my dad... When I was when I was very little, my dad uh, became uh, a member of the Theosophical Society because um, my aunt, his cousin, was very involved with the TS work, and she usually talked to him about the TS. And you know, it took him a while to say, "Well, you know, I'm going to go and try it." And um, he got very, 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 very into the TS, mm -hmm. and so the whole he, he kind of tried to to share that with the family in ways that he could and in ways we could understand uh, at those ages. Uh, I have two brothers. So that's how I learned, little by little, without knowing that I was learning. Ah, okay. And, um, and there's no wrong answer for this next question. Okay. What does theosophy mean to you? Everything. Is that your final answer? Yeah, it means um, theosophy uh, in a way that, I mean, theosophy not necessarily connected to the Theosophical Society, but theosophy means everything to me uh, because it's, it's the way I could say it is my life. Mm. Discovering who I am and discovering why I'm here and letting that uh, divine wisdom shine through me is everything. Yeah, and, and um, we've talked about it a little bit. I know that you, lately you've been teaching a little bit more. So I don't know if, if this is a question that's easy to answer, but how, how does it affect your learning to be teaching more? Your own, how does it affect your own like growth? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that when you, when you teach, you there's two things that happen. Um, one of them is that uh, you need to become very clear about the things you want to share. So it's like you force yourself to be more clear w within, with yourself, and consequently sharing that. And uh, I think it also brings kind of a sense of responsibility that you you can't talk about things you don't understand, or you can't talk about things you're not trying to live according to. So I think it's a it's a tremendous help to share you know the little we we understand with others. And uh, of course, I'm obligated to talk about books because I work in the library. So um, not obligated, I'm privileged to talk about books. So what is your favorite theosophical book and why? Oh my, <laughs> my favorite theosophical book. Uh, there's so many, uh, but the first one that comes to mind, and because probably because I have said this other uh, times, is uh, Light on the Path. And and um, what about it especially appeals to you, Light on the Path? Um, I think it touched me in a, in a very special way in a certain time in my life. Yeah. And um, it's, it's very poetical. Yeah. And it... Uh, I think it touches the soul from another place that is not so maybe so intellectual. Yeah. So it kind of I think it can it can awake uh, um, awake yes. things within you. Yeah. 
um, in an indirect way, if you want to mm -hmm. say it in that way. Mm -hmm. And final, last question. Um, is there anything you would wish for the future of the Theosophical Movement? I... Ooh. Well, I would wish that whatever has to happen, happens. Okay, that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a great answer. Um, now... Let them be, you know... Yeah. The will above us and not our will. Okay. Um, let's say that you were able to just squeeze in a little bit of your uh, will <laughs> in there. Um, are, are there any sort of specifics that you would like to see, not necessarily change, but maybe things you'd like to see enhanced about the TS? Well, I would like uh, more people to know about us. Yeah. Because I think that a lot of people out there could benefit tremendously from theosophy and it's a shame that uh, we are not reaching those people and uh, you know yeah. um, they usually find other ways to to cope with life or to if they do you know sometimes it, it is so hard to find what you're looking for like when I was talking about my dad and he spent years and years going to retreats and he never felt he was you know finding what he was looking for until he finally decided to go to ATS and yeah he thought that was it mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of people out there that would feel that way if they knew about the TS yeah and um, I don't mean to put you on the spot but you mentioned once to me once before about this one, is not fair yeah it's bringing personal things yeah <laughs> and you you mentioned that one of the appeals of theosophy is is you said because it, it there is so much responsibility and you have to be able to shape it for yourself you have to be able to ha create your own path kind of I'm quoting you in a really loose way but you said something in in essence like that it's why you preferred it over more sort of like a, like an organized religion mm -hmm, in a mm -hmm. sense well what something that I I was able to grasp um, from from certain writers and uh, you know people that share some wisdom with us was that you can never follow anybody you cannot be Krishnamurti you cannot be Mother Teresa um, but you can be yourself and that is the hardest part <laughs> and um, discovering the path is what actually develops you yeah. and um, uh, help you, you know, that, that that's what help you um, become what you really are. Yeah. And you will never be able to do that if you try to be like someone else. Yeah. And so a book like you mentioned, Light on the Path, or books by Mabel Collins, they maybe they help you both with, quote unquote, the spiritual work, but you, know, you feel like it also helps you to become your true self, more real. Well, yeah, yeah, it can cer certainly help. Okay. But there is a lot. There is a lot more out there apart from that book. Yeah, that we need to explore, and uh, you know, not not only books, of course. I think there is a lot into life, into yeah. into observing and exploring life itself, mm -hmm. that can bring you as closer, or even more clo close, or much closer than reading a book. Yeah, although um, sometimes it's okay to read a book. And, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we really want to encourage you to read books. Uh, no, of course, of yeah. course, we 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 need it. We need to hear what other people that got there felt and knew, and you know, there's a reason why they shared all that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so um, that about wraps it up. I want to thank Juliana Sassano for for agreeing to do this <laughs> at literally about 30 seconds notice. I just grabbed her off out of the hallway, and. Um, um, and uh, not to embarrass you, but somebody who really does uh, live the path. You make it seem effortless. So thank you, Huli.